Hi everybody. Well, I've been in the hospitals from Wednesday to Sunday. So a five day period. I was supposed to be in full seven days. Um, they actually could have released me in four, but they just wanted to take one extra day precaution. Um, so I think I did pretty darn well. However, I had two roommates. And one was a pleasure. And one I want to smother in his sleep with a pillow. So, um, yeah, when I first arrived, another gentleman was in my room. It's a, a, a semi-private room. And uh, after a while, we were talking between the curtains. And then when he'd get up, he'd say, peek in, say hi, or I'd peek in, say hi. And uh, we would have conversations just talking about anything and, and uh, the medical care and everything. He was very happy-go-lucky, kind of like I am, right? Very easygoing person and everything. We had differences of opinion on stuff. And as soon as we kind of noticed it between us, we kind of just dropped that topic, went on to another topic. And it was very easy like that. He, he gave me a book he was reading. He said, in case I was interested, I thank him so much. I'll, I'll finish reading that. And so it was good. But luckily for him, he was able to uh, get out of the hospital the next day. He had been in for a few days. And so he was on his way. And his first surgery was colon cancer, uh, like my first surgery. And so I wished him all the best and told him some tips that I had and everything for recovery. But I think he's going to do fine, no problem like that. And then they wheeled in another gentleman. And there was just something. At first, I thought I was put into a room with a 75, 80 year old gentleman. You know, he just you hear the, the frail voice. Uh, the you know and all that I okay and and the, the the kind of whimpering tone in everything. Um, I said okay, I'm I'm I don't see who this is and everything and everything. Eventually, I found out he's like a forty year old, so he's way younger than I am. Um, he's in absolutely no pain. They keep coming in, checking him for pain and everything like that. He's in zero pain whatsoever. But he's in a foul mood every second of the day. And not necessarily when the nurses come in. A nurse will come in and talk to him about something, and he'll be, oh, yep, yep, oh, yep, yep. And then the minute they leave, oh, this is bull, this is bull, this is bull. And I just, I just hear him through the curtain cursing and swearing and calling everybody a name in the world and, and, uh, it just, and, and here's, here's the kind of thing that got me. Um, I'm, you're sitting in the bed and then you, you hear the person beside you's bed being moved. So you hear, like, so he's lowering the bed like this. And then you hear, oh, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. And then you hear, beep, boop. And he presses the call button from the nurse. Nurse comes on and says, can you send my nurse, please? She says, I, I just spilled water all over my bed. Can you come and change my sheets? So, the okay, accidents happen, right? Nurse, nurse comes in, they get him back up. Uh, they change all the sheets and everything, blankets and all that. He gets back into bed. Five minutes later, I hear, Jeez, stop, stop. Beep up. Yes, I, I did it again. I spilled water. Can someone come change my blankets, please? He spilled water again all over his bed. Again. Five minutes after he just had his sheets changed. Again. And I was like, what the heck? I mean, I'd be so embarrassed that I did it a second time. I would never have called the front desk. I'd have slept in the wet. Um, 
but that happened. And then every time they would come in and they'd start, start talk to them, uh, okay, well, you know, if everything goes well with this test and that test and you're passing this, then maybe we can get you out of here on Sunday. And he was here, this is like Friday night. And he took that as, I'm getting out of here Sunday. Not, if everything passes, the tests are going well, you're, you're doing your walking and all this other stuff, you can get out of here on Sunday. And he took that as, I'm leaving on Sunday. And so Saturday comes along and they said, okay, well, you still need to do this. You still need to do that. And, and then if, if you can get that done today and everything, then, then maybe we can send you home tomorrow. And he starts calling and making arrangements to go home the next day and everything. He has to get uh, 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 an ambulance service to bring him to the house because he needs to get in by stretcher. He can't get into the house by himself. He can't climb stairs by himself yet. He has some sort of bag attachment on his body. I'm not sure what it's doing, uh, but I do know this. He decided to take it upon himself to squeeze all the air out of that bag. And by doing so, he busted it. So on the second night of this gentleman being there, the first night he spilled water all over himself twice. Second night, he's squeezing the air out of a bag attached to his body. And they come in and they have to replace the whole bag and tell him not to do that anymore. I don't know what anyone was thinking. Anything attached to your body, you don't go squeezing air. Uh, you don't want air going into your veins or something like that. That's a good way to die. Um, but no, you squeezing the air out, I guess. I don't know why. And then, of course, Sunday comes along and they said, well, you haven't been really walking. Um, so, you know, the, the physiotherapy people said, well, you did walk, you were still a little shaky and that, and they need to see you walk before we get home. Well, I don't need to know how to walk. Come on. I got to get out of here and blah, blah, blah. It's just horrible here. Blah, blah, blah. And I mean, remember, he's been in no pain whatsoever. They're waiting, waiting on him hand and foot. Um, and it's been miserable in there. It's been horrible in there. And... They said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll get a couple of nurses together and, uh, and we'll walk with you today. And if we see that you're stable enough to walk, then we can release, we'll release you later. So well, I'll sign a waiver and everything. I, that's, that's not how this works. You know, hospitals are, you know, can't just say you can go. You can get up and walk and leave yourself. You, uh, they are not holding you prisoner. You can get up and walk. But that's all on you, and the hospital can't be sued if you do that. Um, but they will tell you if, if anything happens, and we told you not to go, uh, your insurance isn't going to cover you, nothing's going to cover you. That was your stupidity. Um, but he hemmed and hawed, and then he called his wife. And I got to say, good on her. Good on her, because she wasn't having any of it. He gets on there and he's just whining to her. Oh, it's rather, don't let me go home. I've been in here and they told me I'd go. And, and, and now they want me to walk. I can't believe I walked. I walked yesterday. I walked the day before. He never ha he's, he's never gotten out of his bed in the entire time that I've been there. I go out for 10 laps at a time around the floor. Um, and he's never once gotten out of his bed to go, except to go to the washroom the whole time I've been there. And so, uh, yeah, no, no, he wasn't walking. And then she, she did, and he, then, he, then he comes up with, I mean, he goes, Jesus, they're like, they're torturing me in here. And that's when she lost her lid on the other end of the phone. And she just said, you got a man up, stop. You know, stop being a little blank, blank, blank and get some, Blank, blank, blank in your souls. Um, they're not torturing you there. They're looking after you. They're trying to do their best to keep you up. If they tell you you got to walk, just get up and walk. You have been apprehensive about walking the entire time you've been there. And he goes, oh, I walked a couple days. They said you got to walk as often as you can. And you haven't. And now they're saying you have to walk. And all they want you to do is get up and walk. Just get up and walk then. And she just laid into him, and I was um, and I'm on the, I'm on the other end of the curtain going, yeah. <laughs> and put it this way, 
I left the hospital and he was still there. And had he just done what he was asked to do, he probably would have left actually the day before. But no, he just sat there and decided to be miserable. And I have no, no sympathy for that. He's a young man, just was looked after in a hospital, probably saved his life. And he couldn't be bothered to do a few simple things and just sat there and moaned and groaned and complained the whole time, the whole time. And then that thought to me, well, when the doctors came to me and said, oh, it was really nice having you here. You always seemed like a happy person. Well, if that's an example of an average person in the hospital, then I, I must seem like a hospital patient of the year because this guy was driving me nuts and I didn't have to service him. I didn't have to look after him. I just had to listen to him. And I tell you, I don't know how many times I looked over at him and was holding a pillow in my hand. <laughs> I just felt like, here, I'll put you out of your misery. I just don't get it. I just don't get it.